Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to Remembrance Day service in Peaslake, which marks the 75th anniversary of the end of the Second World War. It also marks the 99th year of the service of the Royal British Legion. We start our service. Jesus said, there is no greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. We are here to worship Almighty God, whose purposes are good, whose power sustains the world. He has made who loves us, though we have failed in his service, who gave Jesus Christ for the life of the world, who by his Holy Spirit leads us his way. As we give thanks for his great works, we remember those who have lived and died in his service and in the service of others. We pray for all who suffer through war and are in need. We ask for his help and blessing that we may do his will and that the whole world may acknowledge him as Lord and King. And so let us confess our sins to Almighty God, saying together, O God, our, our Father, Father you have called us to your service. We confess that we have not always listened to your call, that we have often heard it and have not obeyed. Forgive us our neglect of our duty to you and to our neighbours, and help us to follow where you lead, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so may Almighty God have mercy upon us pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now Doug and the choir will lead us in our first hymn, O Valiant Heart. reading is taken from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 43. Love for enemies. 
You have heard that it was said, you shall love thy neighbour and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect. Therefore, as your heavenly Father, is perfect. Here endeth the reading. Thanks be to God. Thank you John for that reading. <clears throat> In a little while John and I will be reading the names of those from Peaslake who lost their lives in the two great wars from the last century. Um, we were planning to do it as part of a live service within the church but unfortunately uh, as of Thursday we're no longer to do that. Uh, we're also not able to have uh, anything outside at Pease Lake because of the complication with permissions around the memorial. Uh, although we are able to do that in Shear because the land is owned by the Brays and managed by Shear Parish Council uh, and so we've managed to get those permissions. Uh, but again under the new lockdown rules only those specifically invited are to take part. But we will be reading out the names of those from uh, this part of the parish uh, who left lost their lives in the services uh, during that service and we'll be recording that and we'll put that online on Wednesday morning on Remembrance Day itself. But there is a third memorial in the parish uh, and it's this one here. Um, it's a specific one in memory uh, of Norman Robertson and Lawrence Robertson, both who lost their lives in the First World War uh, and it's funded by their brother uh, who gave a large amount of money to the National Trust uh, with the proviso that wherever that money was used a memorial to his brothers uh, would be put up and this is one of nine uh, across the south of England and so I've come up here uh, alongside that uh, and with this second World War pillbox behind me uh, for this part of the service. From up here uh, I can see pretty much the whole parish, Pease Lake uh, up on the hill, Gomshall just down the road and Shear down in the valley there. Earlier in the week on Tuesday I was in Shear uh, and I went into Hillies, uh, got myself a coffee. Dean and I were talking about the weather, it was a, a lovely day like today and as I left the shop he said to me, the sun shines on the righteous. I stopped to start to explain to him uh, that actually that's not really what the Bible is saying uh, but I realised I was being too pedantic uh, and I said oh never mind it's complicated we'll, we'll talk about it another time. Um, as the week went on and I thought about that passage um, I thought that actually there is some relevance to today and that's why I asked John to make it our reading for today. Uh, the, the phrase, the sun shines on the righteous, uh, probably originally comes from Psalm 97, verse 11, which says, light shines on the righteous. And you can imagine, over time, uh, that became part of common parlance, turned into the sun shines on the righteous, uh, so that by Jesus' time, it was a phrase that was used just the same way as we use it today, uh, in, in Palestine, in, in Israel, uh, in Jordan, uh, people would meet uh, on a sunny day and one would say to the other, the sun shines on the righteous. Uh, and so Jesus, picking up on that uh, in our reading today, says you, you've heard the sun shines on the righteous, uh, but actually the sun shines on the righteous and the unrighteous equally, just as rain falls on the good and the bad equally. Now Jesus is saying some really important things here. Uh, he's saying that as Christians we don't believe in predestination, we believe that we have free will, that, that our choices have real effects and real consequences on us. But he's also saying that sometimes stuff happens because of the behaviour of others, because of the way that the world works. And that doesn't necessarily mean, in fact it doesn't mean, that it's a punishment from God when bad stuff happens to us. It doesn't mean that there's a meaning or a purpose to it. It just means that that's the way that the world works. 
But more importantly, what Jesus is saying is that God loves everyone equally. That whether we are good or whether we are bad, God still loves us. Because the basics of life, the weather, um, are the same for everyone equally. The blessings of creation are the same for everyone equally. Yes, of course God disapproves of some of the things we do. Of course God gets angry sometimes at our behaviour and the way we mistreat each other. But just with our, like with our own children, who even when they're cross, and we might be cross, but we still love them, God still loves us all equally. The sun, his love, shines equally on the righteous and the unrighteous. The interesting thing about this passage in today's context is that it comes in a setting where Jesus begins by saying that we should love our enemies. And what Jesus is saying here is that in one sense, we should treat everybody equally, whether they are behaving well towards us or not. To be clear, when Jesus says we love our enemies, he's not talking about a warm, fuzzy kind of feeling. He's talking about behavior. Uh, just as when we are instructed to love our neighbor, that means that we should behave well towards our neighbor. Uh, it, it equally means that when we love our enemies, it means that we should still treat our enemies with basic human respect and kindness, even when they are not treating us in that way. We should love our enemies. Now, there are lots of very good, sensible reasons for doing that. Um, we need to maintain certain standards of good behaviour. We need to take the moral high ground. Uh, sometimes, by treating those who mistreat us with love, we can actually stop them and make them think and possibly even change their actions. Also, when we hate people, when we despise people, when we have anger, bitterness, the desire for revenge against people, um, it's, it's actually us who are damaged through that. And that's another good reason not not to hate people as individuals. We might disagree with what they're doing, we might fight against what they are doing, but we mustn't hate or despise them. Here we're stood with reminders of two world wars. Uh, a First World War reminder uh, and the pillbox behind a Second World War reminder. Many would argue that the First World War should never have happened. But that doesn't mean that today we don't remember and respect and give thanks for those who gave their lives in that, co their, in that conflict. Today is about remembering and giving thanks for all those who lost their lives in war and conflict, no matter what the circumstances of the war itself. Most of us would probably agree that the Second World War was a more just war, that, it, that we had to fight it, that the Allies had to fight it, that Hitler had to be stopped. Uh, and the respect that we give to those who fell in that conflict is, there, is not any more than those who fell in the First World War. We respect those sacrifices equally. The Nazis committed atrocities uh, and they had to be stopped. Uh, and, and we are right to condemn and even to hate their actions. But even within a war, we still need to treat our enemies with dignity and with respect. That's, that's how we seek to build a better society and come through wars into peace. That's how forgiveness and reconciliation can happen after a war's happened, by behaving as well as we can within them. But actually Jesus is saying even more than that. He's saying that as individuals we have to spend our whole lives trying to be better, to grow, to grow more like God. And we need to love our neighbour and to love God is, is the primary way that we do, even loving our neighbours when they don't seem to be loving us. That's how we become better people. That's how we grow in our faith and as human beings. And that is often a very, very hard thing to do, particularly when somebody uh, is, is, is really difficult to love. Um, and God can help us to do that. When you, when you know that you need to or even want to love someone who is particularly unlovable, pray, ask God to help you to do that, and he will. But in so doing, remember 
that loving our enemies, loving our neighbour, is the primary way that we seek to build a better society. It may not be the primary reason for loving our enemies, but it is actually one of the main consequences. We may, we are not, thank God, involved uh, in, in any kind of, of national war or conflict at the moment, uh, and certainly nothing uh, to the degree of the two great wars that we mainly remember today. But we remember other wars and conflicts as well today. But these principles still apply, and in fact in, in many respects are even more important. Western society, many Western societies, uh, are more polarised today than they have been for years. Uh, and the only way that we can rebuild society and be less polarised is by recognising that we still need to love people who have different views and promote different agendas to us. And so loving our enemy means that Remainers need to love Brexiteers. Loving our enemies means that Republicans need to love Democrats. Uh, as I record this, we're still waiting for the final results. We may argue against their policies, we may fight against their policies, we may do what we have to do or feel we have to do to bring about the kind of society that we individually want, that's, that's democracy. But we mustn't hate, we mustn't despise, and we must love by treating with respect, with dignity, with politeness and with kindness. Yes, we probably have more in common than we actually have that separates us, uh, but beyond that, hope to build the kind of society that God wants us to, that, that we want to, and that the people who died uh, in these wars were fighting to preserve. And we certainly need to do that to make sure that the kind of circumstances that bring these kind of wars about are less likely to happen. That is one way that we truly honour and respect those that we remember today. Let us commemorate and commend to the loving mercy of our Heavenly Father, the Shepherd of Souls, those from Peaslake who have died in the service of our country and its cause. Harry Abraham, Charles R. Aylwin, William J. Aylwin, Robert L. Dowling, H. George Dowling, Albert Edser, George H. Edser, Frank Elliott, Albert J. Goddard, George W. Hunt, Frederick Mansell, Harold V. Mansell, Frederick O'Doherty, Bertram H. Peter, Frederick H. Peter, Oliver J. Pullen, Mornington Tickner. from the 1939-45 conflict, A. Donald Allen, William Blanket, Eric D. Cooper, Mervyn A. Edwards, Dennis A. Edwards, C. John Hode, James H. Houston, Wallace W. J. Hunt, Anthony C. Moss, William Pullen, Victor M. Ritchie, Jonathan Wilson. Let us pray. Let us give thanks for the sacrifice of those who died in two world wars and in other conflicts, especially remember Northern Ireland, the Falklands, the Gulf War and the conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan. 
Almighty and everlasting God, we give thee humble thanks for the mercy and good example of those who lay down their lives in the service of our country. We thank thee for their courage and devotion. Let it not be in vain that they have died in the cause of righteousness and honour, and in thy mercy send thy people into the hearts of all people, everywhere. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who suffer as a result of war. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, we commend to thy mercy all those who suffer as a result of war, especially the maimed, the blind, and those who are afflicted in mind. Have pity upon the homeless and the friendless, and upon those who no longer have a country of their own. Fill us with compassion for them. Prosper all who seek to minister to their needs, and hasten the coming of thy kingdom for justice and of peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this Remembrance Day we come, O Lord, in gratitude for all those who have died and that we might live, for those who endured pain that we may know joy, and for those who suffered imprisonment that we might know heaven. Turn our deep feeling into determination and our determination into deed, that as men and women died for peace, we may live for peace, for the sake of the Prince of Peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, hear your prayer. And now we say the Lord's Prayer. As Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now, Doug and the choir will lead us into the hymn, Eternal Father, Strong to Save.
Let us dedicate ourselves to work for peace in our homes, in our country and among the nations. Saying together the prayer of St Francis of Assisi. Lord, make us make peace instruments of thy peace. Where, Where there is hatred, hatred let us so love. love. Where, Where there, there is injury, our pardon. Where, Where there, there is discord, discord union. union. Where, Where there, there is doubt, doubt faith. faith. Where, Where there, there is despair, despair hope. hope. Where, Where there is darkness, darkness light. light. Where, Where there, there is salvation, joy. For thy, thy mercy and thy, thy truth's sake. Amen. Amen. Thank you to John for helping with today's service. Uh, thank you to Craig from Peace Lake British Legion uh, who laid the wreath and is going to be introducing the two minutes silence in a moment after Brian uh, has played the last post on the bugle for us. Um, in your homes, please respect those two minutes silence wherever you may be. And so let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war, those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of mankind. They shall grow not old, as we who are left behind grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We, we will, will remember, remember them.
you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. And so may God grant grace to the living, rest to the departed, to the Church, the Queen, the Commonwealth and all mankind, peace and concord, and to us and to all his servants, life everlasting. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name, in the name of Christ. Christ.